Hello everyone, it is May 2nd, and we are, uh, we, we went through a bit of a tumble again today. We had it, uh, yesterday as well, but then we, like, one streak our way right back up into gold four, and today we didn't win streak our way back up after gold four. We're kind of hovering around, like, zero LP, gold four, whatever, you know, it happens. Um, the important thing is, we gotta review this game today now. We played it as Syndra against Annie, and you know, I, I haven't played the Syndra versus Annie matchup a lot. I did first pick Syndra this game, so it wasn't really, I was expecting a counter. I wasn't sure how the matchup would go, but I had a feeling that like Annie being able to burst all at once, where Syndra, you kind of have to prep it with the balls. Um, it's a little, it would be a little bit tough in lane. We actually had a decent lane, um, but I think that I probably could have been more proactive out on the map. So that's what we're going to have in the front of our minds as we go into this game. Let's go ahead and download it. And boom, there we go. We'll hop right into the game here. Let's actually see what we could have done better. If I can get that. Oh, I actually have to load that up. As we load in here. Thank you, uh, Break Demi's Demix Clover. <laughs> Thank you for the chat comment. Appreciate it. Feel free to hang out as we go through our lesson today. There we go. Now we got the right tool open. There we go. Okay. So. We started out uh, fairly normal. We took Ignite, matched Annie. So it was definitely going to be a kill lane. Um, we took the dueling damage mastery instead of the biscuits. Not too much worth of note there. Gonna speed right along. I don't think there was anything notable in the early game here. Looks like just standard. Not quite five point, but kind of standard starts. We grouped together just in case there was going to be any shenanigans. Nothing came of it. So here we are in lane. Oh, we also had an issue with the stream, like, audio or something at this point. So there's a couple points where I, like, kind of AFK in lane and stuff. But not anything major. Mostly it was just me walking from base. So definitely took some free damage here. I returned a little bit. She went DFT on Annie instead of, you can't actually see here, but she went DFT instead of Thunderlords. Um, I think she probably would have had much better trades, so I should already be a little bit lower than I am. But uh, just not respecting the stun that she can charge up early game. And kind of leaning a little bit on using my abilities to CS more than I should. Like right there, I should just be getting damage on her. Especially because she had the stun fully charged. I was starting to play a little bit more back this way. Seeing that her stun got charged. But I should just aggressively trade in that situation with my ball if I can find it. Let's go ahead and hit pause here. Ah. There we go. Jump back to look at that gank. Um... If she's going to come in and there's nothing I can do about about it at that point, I need to just throw out my abilities before the stun to make sure I get the trade off. Because otherwise I don't even trade and I just take free damage. And that's not good. If I had been chunking her out a lot more before this gank occurred, she'd be very low. We probably would have got a kill here. Gotta remember that when Shaco comes for a gank, he starts it off with a gap close. So I'm already, if there was a normal gank coming out, we'd be about the same range from Annie, right? But since he opens with a gap close, I need to advance very aggressively onto her to start things off. And doing so would mean I could summon a Q. I don't have E, but I could summon a Q, pick it back up and drop it back on her with my W. And that would get us slow. Instead, I'm a little late to the party. Do wind up getting good damage on her. So, a successful gank at the end of the day, but I definitely could have played that more aggressively. 
She actually kind of walks back into this and doesn't respect the Shaco box damage. <laughs> so she takes a little too much there, but... Nonetheless, that put us at quite an advantage in lane. So it's on us to press that advantage, right? Playing decently far back now because of the stun. But as soon as she drops it, I think I should be going forward and looking for damage to trade. We do wind up getting a trade here and getting the kill with Ignite. So that's first blood, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's really good. Good job by me. But positioning like this to give her an opportunity to continue to walk forward so I can just E right here and get the stun and get a free full combo and finish her with Ignite. That's really, that's a good example of positioning. Once I have the balls down, I need to play around them like that to make sure I can set up for stuns to get trades. I wasn't doing that earlier because I wasn't level 3 yet, but now that I'm 3, that's pretty good. I still think levels 1 and 2 I should be a little bit more aggressive about just getting my damage down. But once I hit 3, this is really, this is a great example of positioning. And because I was getting so beaten the dirt in levels 1 and 2, um, come level 3, she's playing a little disrespectfully, takes the ignite and dies. So that's first blood. That's good. Farm out the next wave. Go back to base. That allows us to pick up Aether Wisp, the control ward, and a bunch of health bots. Good stuff. So far the game's looking like it's going in our favor. 4-0. Not too bad of a start, if I do say so myself. And because I got the solo kill on the Annie, that means every lane has some like some component of being ahead. Twitch with two assists and like death timers on the enemy bot lane. So now I have a level advantage here. Annie's stun isn't charged at all, not even close. So right now, even though there's more minions here for her, I think I should go aggressively position wise and walk forward to somewhere around here. Because then I could be hitting my abilities on her. <laughs> That's a nice little face I've drawn. If I'm standing here, I can be hitting my abilities on her while still last hitting this wave. And my abilities won't draw aggro from the call for help. So I could start chunking her out. And again, because of the level discrepancy, I'd be trading advantageously. And notably, she didn't have a best back. Even without the levels into account, I've just got an additional 10 AP and a little bit of movement speed from this Aether Wisp. So I should be able to out-trade her pretty clearly so. This is good positioning, looking for an E. A little focused on the farm. I probably could have gotten an E on her and got a good trade there. But now that the stun's up, now I need to back up. Okay, now that it's not, we're fine. Let me switch to the only R vision here. Because I don't know this gank is coming, right? I'm just pushing the wave out. Keep an eye out for any free damage we could possibly get. And Udyr actually ends up recalling there. And I will see just the tail end of that recall. It kind of freaks me out. I don't know if he like canceled it. Or completed it, so I'm, I'm keeping an eye on there. But since I have this ward and my minions and myself, we're giving vision of this corridor. You know, you just has to run at you. I'm feeling pretty safe. It would take an any flash stun to start things off, and without a charge, we're fine. Right here, gotta get the auto attack off, but I need to immediately look for that E. Okay, good, I do. That's nice. Trying to find any harass damage under turret that I can. 
Now that she's six, gotta be a little bit more respectful. All right, she's six. We haven't seen her flash, so I should know this flash is up, and she has tibbers. I this is way too far forward. I think. I think right now what I should do as soon as like that last wave finished at her turret, and she hits six off it, I should have immediately roamed. Look at the position bot lane is in right now. Right. Because we didn't know the skirmish was going to happen top. So it might have even been advantageous for me to go top as well. Right? But look at that position bot lane is in. If I came through the river right now, I'd be in a perfect spot. Even if they started retreating because they saw me at Scuttle or something. They're just way over and ex overextended. Instead, I'm hanging out here mid where I've got Annie that has Flash, Ignite, Tibbers, Stun. You know, that's... Begin to die. And I don't know if she uses it here. Moving like this is far too aggressive. I need to just be in full out retreat mode when Annie's walking forward like this with Tibbers up. And sure as shit, there's the flash. She has the Tibbers. I'm able to knock her away because she was behind and she only has the amp tone. Thank God. Because I only survive with about 100 HP, right? And she did blow everything there, so that's actually pretty good for us. But I shouldn't have been in position for that trade in the first place. Since I'm already here, I wind up just looking top to see what I could possibly do. I think, okay, well, I'll just get these last hits until Clud comes in to farm it out. Seeing Clud ult, I say... Well, okay, if you're ult, then I'll come with you. It's all you, though, buddy. Throw down A, Q, and then hit R just to get damage down. I actually wind up getting the kill there. So, wonderful. That worked out. Great on Cled there. Glad I roamed up top to catch what was left of that wave and wound up resulting in the kill. Beautiful. Come back to lane. And actually, it get, notably gives me enough gold to get my needlessly large rod. So I can really nicely transition into my Luden's Echo here. So, pretty lucky. Pause up lane trying to figure out the audio issues. <laughs> Luckily, we got those taken care of. First of all, just farming out the wave. I need to, again, be looking for the stun onto Annie here. Because, again, she doesn't have her stun to answer. So instead of positioning forward to start like looking for a Q onto the minions, I should just position this way so I can look for this E. And if she doesn't respect it like she didn't earlier and gave me first blood off of, that's something to look for. Now I don't have ultimate at this point in time, but nonetheless, I should be looking for an E onto her. I try and go for something while I farm the minions, which is efficient use of the abilities, but couldn't quite find it. Do get a good trade in, even though she gets the stun charged all the way up. Since she used her abilities to get it to the full stun, I'm able to get a full trade, proc Thunderlords, and then just walk away with her stun up. Now she has to use it under turret. Beautiful. So that's a really good trade for me there, even though I couldn't land the stun. And we do see that Annie goes back. Go and interrupt. Great. I actually cancel the Q there, so I don't waste the mana. Which allows me to shove this out a little bit quicker. Seeing that means that I probably am not headed bot unless if there's a gank, which there is. So I start positioning a little bit more towards the top side. Seeing all this action bot, I should immediately start roaming here. Instead, I spend time going forward right here. I should have immediately started heading this direction to make the play happen bottom. I think this is just poor map awareness on my part, not realizing that there was a fight this like intense happening. And look, I actually am here long enough to get a full auto off on the turret before I start heading that direction. I probably, instead of being here, if I had gone from there, like hung around and autoing and then come, if I had gone directly there, I probably would be out of the screen, actually. <laughs> I probably would just be entirely off the map. <laughs> yes, they, 
Tilt Daddy. Syndra is, in fact, the most broken champ 100% of the time. Regardless of win rates, she's just she has too much damage, <laughs> I think. Um, that's why I play her. So anyways, I'm a lot slow on to this rotation. I'm basically a full screen away from where I could have been. So I do ping out the dragon, which is the right thing to do there. But just imagine, if I'm right here, I'm not sure if Thresh's Lantern is up, and unfortunately the cooldowns and replays are still bugged, so they keep ticking every time you hit pause. But if I were right here, you know, maybe I could get a flash into position and then QE for a stun and make a kill happen, because I might have my ultimate available. Or Thresh might even have his Lantern up, and he could Lantern me in. Unfortunately, I'm just way too far away. I'm not able to make anything happen. All I can do is really give vision to let us know where he's at. Not much comes of it. And I wind up roaming just to get a plant, effectively, and get some more mana. Which, okay, I come back with mana, great. And I ping out the enemies coming, so she's going to waste her time a little bit there. That's fine. But... Not an effective use of my time. If I had instead gone top and made something happen, or had roamed quicker bottom, that would have been much better. I could have impacted the game instead of just hanging out. So it's good to look for trades while she's dealing with minions. Do need to be cautious, because as she throws out the last Q to farm it out, she has her W stun up, and she might have Tibbers available. So we need to be careful. Instead, we look for way too aggressive of a trade, and she punishes us for it, you know? This is exactly what she should do. I'm not lucky enough to get my E to knock her back that time, so I have to flash, and basically threw away my flash for no reason there, and took a whole bunch of damage for no reason there. So I'm gonna miss out on the wave. I think I actually go to catch this wave, is that right? Yeah. So now I have to play super far back. I'm effectively useless in lane right now, just because I have to play so far back. I'm sure I am able to get most of these last hits, I, if I recall correctly. But I I can't go in on a really nice stun there. Because I'm already so completely chunked out. If she gets anything with Ignite on me, I'm basically dead. Now that's not really helpful for my team just to be a farm bot mid. That's what the turret's for. <laughs> So, unfortunate that I took that Tibbers for effectively nothing there. And he gets the roam off. Good red ward. Catches her out. Seeing her bottom. Let's me know to shove this as quickly as I can. This is a good time to use the abilities exclusively on the minions. I start roaming down bot to see if we can find them. Still don't know who aggroed that, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. Take some damage, which is unfortunate. I keep walking right past the control ward there, which is a good decision. Because they're very close here. Now, Tom Kench does eat her, which does hurt. Unfortunately, Annie comes out of Fog of War with Stun Charmed. Or Stun Charged. That happens sometimes. All I can do is try and trade back immediately as quickly as I can. Which I do get the kill. But between the Tibbers, who gets aggroed and does additional damage afterwards, and the Ignite, I'm dead. Luckily for us, Ash flashes, because she doesn't, like, take that into account. But that means Berserk Tibbers, like, goes off and actually winds up killing Shaco. So, value Tibbers for Annie there. There's no real way for me to play around Tibbers going crazy when I kill Annie, aside from killing her quicker uh, before she can Tibbers, which I tried to do as best I could, but... Only so much you can do there. Speeding it up. Come on. There we go. We head back up mid. Lanes are still basically happening right now. It's very... It's becoming a much more fluid game. Um, there's only the top outer down. But even so, like, mid is bot all the time, you know? Let's keep it on two times the speed. You just have to basically manage the wave mid, and then we can look to roam wherever. So it's okay to use this to just shove. Try and give ourselves a little bit more um, presence globally. And I want to review this 
uh, stun positioning here. Because as we were talking about earlier, this is a good setup for the E. And the E hitbox is actually pretty generous. You see it goes like right over Annie's shoulder, but it actually still counts that hitbox, which is really nice. And because of that, I should be able to get in a decent trade afterwards. And stuff like that is what I should be looking for every time, right? Just from that, the Thunderlords, the W, the Q, she's pretty much dead. So it's, it's a little risky to have gone in on her because she could have had like Tibbers available or something. Um, but I don't really have a way to finish her off. My ultimate wasn't available at the time and my Ignite was down. So fortunately, maybe I could have finished her off with an extra ability, but I, I chalked that one up to playing safe rather than sorry. The unfortunate thing is I get caught by Udyr afterwards, right? And I'm just dead. Wasteful to even use my ult there. I just wanted to get something done on him. But after... Yeah, we just don't have vision here. After Annie just retreated through this part of the jungle... Shaco's... I mean, Shaco's here at Scuttle Crab. So I feel pretty confident in the knowledge. It's just he happened to slip right through the fog of war. This is just good Udyr play. Upon review, I thought this was going to be a time where I probably could have done better, but I think that's just an un a, a fortunate run by, uh, or ganked by Udyr right through the fog of war on us. Almost kills Shaco there. Luckily for us, he doesn't. Got the loot and Zekko completed. Actually, previous back I got it completed, but nonetheless, it's done now. I'm trying to see if I can find an opportunity to go on Annie. Can't quite find it. Back mid. I've got Annie pinned at the turret because I just shoved. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a perfect, perfect rotation here because right now, the minions aren't even showing to each other on the map yet. So Annie might just assume that I'm still here in mid, as might the rest of her team. And I'm already down here. This is the kind of roam I could have made happen earlier. And it's much less effective now that I have not that I didn't do it earlier, but I am still able to flash in the last bit of damage onto Ash. Actually didn't need to use the E there. And it might have been able to secure Tom so we could have more effectively as a team switched priority to focusing Annie. I am able to throw the ult off. I do go down to Ignite, which is unfortunate. And Annie, I think, yeah, almost kills everybody. Only because of the ult does Shaco get away. Super close. And Annie's just become a monster this game, right? Would have been nice to have thrown down some vision on my way into the gank. So if Annie matched with the room, we could have been a bit more prepared. Would have also been nice for me to just keep an eye on mid and anytime Annie's Mia, know that she could be matching me, right? Which is another mistake I make here. I think, okay, I'm gonna go help Shaco. But Annie matches me. And because of that, that's not a fair point. Okay, I need to get out of the way. Not able to though, because she flash stuns me. Good play by Annie. So probably I think... It's more I'm not tracking. I'm not tracking my opposing laner. Both in lane with like trying to make sure that I track when her stun is up, right? And trying to track like where she goes around the map. I had a little bit of that, but once once we've hit this mid game point, like I'm not doing a very good job of being prepared for her to pop out to answer me or to pop out here to answer me. And I'm getting punished really hard. Oh, 
which almost gets him too. It's unfortunate. And at this point, like, Annie's just become an absolute insane monster. <laughs> I'm looking to try and finish her. And I actually die here. And I think this is because... Sure, okay. I was tracking where Annie was. I was mostly just tunneling, though. Once I see low Annie, I'm like, okay, well, let me get some shutdown gold. What I need to be tracking in this position is this enemy bot lane here. And as soon as Ash disappears, which Thrush does ping out, I need to be ready. And I need to be anticipating that. Instead, I, I just don't have enough damage to kill her. Well, I mean, I get the kill, but I don't have enough damage to, like, kill her in, a, in enough... Okay. I'm really struggling with this, with this engagement. Because the zone is there, I don't realize that Ash is here, though, right? And it's the summoner heal that comes out that gives her additional health. And I wanted to move in in case if Annie immediately started to retreat. But if I had instead positioned here, and then had just used my E in this direction, there were probably, like, these two balls would cover enough surface area from the E that would come out to where I would hit Annie even if she did start to retreat immediately after the Zonias. So there's probably no reason for me to have come this far in when I could have come this far up instead and still use the same exact Q, and still use the same exact E. But instead... Sure, Annie may have gotten me low again, but look at how far that goes out. If I was right here already, Annie maybe wouldn't have even been in range to hit me with her W, because it's actually fairly short range. It probably would stop, like, around here. And also, this is about where Ash's W stops. As soon as I threw out that last ability, I could have kept kiting up and just walked away from Ash and would have not taken the damage from Ash there and might have been able to get that for free and get away with my life. Just not tracking my enemy champions. This is something I did a lot of in when I was playing jungle. But I think I, I've gotten a little, little sloppy with not doing that. Good call here. Just come up here and try and get the York. And this is a moment that I actually found pretty funny. <laughs> so we're going to watch this one. So I come right up here. Just make sure that I throw the last bit of damage down on the York so you can actually get him without Shaco going down. And then I think I'll try and get Udyr. I probably can't because it's Udyr. The best I can do is do a QE and if that hits, I can maybe get him. But it doesn't. So... Accurately, he realizes he's gotten away, so he starts doing the taunt. So I say, okay, look, I'm coming for you. Fine, I'm just backing in the brush. I actually do the full-on back, too, in case if he has a warded, so he could walk further forward to try and mess with me. He doesn't, because I see the minions just walking by without having aggro. So what that allows me to do is say, okay, well, you don't know that I'm backing. So as soon as these minions are out of the way... I'm going to walk, and right now we see the vision from the minions. It actually just barely catches me, but Udyr doesn't realize it, thank goodness. And I'm able to walk just outside of the cone of vision of this uh, brush, position myself here, and I throw a blind Q in this brush and kill him. <laughs> So that was pretty nice. That felt good. And a game that was really tough. That, that one was a nice little moral victory to get me, my head back in the game. <laughs> and most importantly, gave me blue buff. 
So aside from the morale buff, I can now very effectively just have my balls with me all the time, and my ultimate is available. So that's great. And that, again, it's not just like, aha, gotcha, Udyr, you dick, that's why you don't BM. Yes, it is that, that feels good. But that's a good example of tracking my opponents, right? Just in my mind, I got to remember where they would be, where they would be going to, know where they are now, and then be able to infer where they can be from when they left, excuse me, from when they left Vision. He might have kept running and gone to Blast Cone and then like got fruit or warded up or done another camp, done Scuttle, who knows. But he could just be in this brush. So in that whatever percentage of the time he's just in this brush, I'm going to get a free kill. So let's get it. That's good mental tracking. That's something I need to do more in this game. I look mid to try and find the play. Can't quite make it happen. And the engage starts. As soon as I see Tom Kench coming in, I back up. With the redemption, I try and hang out on the very edge of it. To get the buff. Do or get the heal rather with my Q or with my blue buff I try and keep getting as one as much harass down as possible but two also just like clear the wave out keep as many balls up as I can it's free mana why not use it I hang kind of back letting Shaco go first because we saw there was a whole bunch there for the same reason I'm very leery about going into this brush to see if I hit that stun. I wait a little bit and then check because they might have retreated. Seeing Tom Kench come over the wall here seems like a little unusual. Seems like somebody might have been left behind. So I come in, look for Annie. Tom Kench eats her. But luckily, neither of them have flash. So we come in, we're again positioning for the zonies ends, we do hit it with the stun, and since she was able to get Tibbers out, oops that's not to jump back. As soon as I saw this Tibbers come out, I was like okay I have to just kill her immediately. She doesn't have stun up, but this is a lot of damage to the team, right? And she almost gets away here, so we can't let that happen. So we just flash forward and immediately make sure our ult goes off. Because even though we might die, to, we were gonna, we might have died to Tibbers anyway. So we might as well make sure we secure the kill on Annie. Seems alright. Not the best. Pretty sure this was warded. So they should have realized there was a box in here. Good ult, because it was warded. Even with the box, they still get the kill. I'm heading up top to try and stop this, but the Baron's up. I can't really do much as far as wave clear. Pick up the Needless. Let's take that last extra bit of gold. Here in case there's a hook, I can't really do much against any of these Baron minions because I just only do exclusively magic damage and Baron minions don't care about that. Just looking for opportunities to post. I feel like York is pretty squishy against me at this point and he does have the ZZ Rot's magic resistance but not much else and he doesn't have a whole bunch of health behind it. He's So he has more like squishiness than standard. It would feel like, at least, for losing our inhibitors, for losing all three inhibitors in the game. It's only 24 minutes, so that's probably why. But I start to look kind of for work there. It does mean my E's down, so I have to be careful and just retreat right away. I do. I loop back around as soon as I see the hook, try and get any return damage. And then, since I've got a few balls on the ground already, I just hold Ash. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough. Twitch finishes her off, but Annie flashes in and through the redemption. That's pretty much game. 
because in the meantime, all the Baron minions have just been wailing on it with uh, Udyr. And that's about all she wrote. So I feel like that wasn't as much anything about Anything about lane? There was a little bit of there was a little bit of areas for improvement where we could have roamed around the map more effectively. But I think even that was part of tracking your enemy laner and tracking uh well your enemy enemies generally. Um but not just my own enemy laner, the whole team, right? Knowing what was happening bottom lane during that skirmish in the, like, late early game, that should have been a key to roam way quicker to bot lane. And I didn't. I hesitated. I threw in an auto on mid turret for no reason. That didn't really amount to anything. <laughs> um, and it, what it did was it delayed me from getting down to bot lane to make the play there. And I wasn't able to make the play as a result. So that was a missed opportunity there. And when I had missed that opportunity, later, Annie, after pretty much every time I think it was, would answer wherever I would roam. Even if I would get there quicker than she would, she would answer. And I wasn't tracking that. I wasn't keeping track of, well, okay. She, sure, she was pinned to turret slightly and had to finish off the wave. But immediately after we lose vision of her finishing that last minion, we got to assume she's on her way to match me. And we weren't doing that. And we weren't tracking where she could be. So every time Annie came out of the fog of war, it was a surprise to us. And if Annie is surprising you, <laughs> that typically means you're going to die. Or your teammates around you are going to die. And that was the case a number of times. If we had done better tracking of where Annie was, we could have been able to be better prepared, better positioned defensively, and instead of going for those last hits, we could have been able to answer her when she tries to look for her engage. There's a vulnerability she has there. And I, somebody who was playing Annie a lot, if it wasn't last episode, it was the episode before that, we were playing a lot of Annie. It's when you're right before you engage, there's that window of vulnerability because her range isn't very high. So when she's looking for that last little bit of gap close, whether it's flash, whether it's just walking, whether it's proto belt, this game she didn't build proto belt, but just for example, there's a bit of a vulnerability there that you can exploit. And that's where I would need to like QE to stun her, both creating distance and get a stun off. And that would allow us either plenty of time to retreat or time to shift over and focus her and try and knock her out before she can get that rotation of spells off. And we weren't doing that because we weren't tracking our enemy laner. We weren't keeping in mind where she was on the map at all points in time. And we could have done better there. So that's something I think we need to work on in mid lane. It's a little bit easier when your jungle or support to keep that in mind. Because you have less of the micro of wave management to worry about. It's jungles primarily looking around at the map trying to figure out, okay, which side's pushing, who's going to be vulnerable. But also, as support, you're trying to keep tabs on where people are. That's not exclusively a support and jungle thing, though. You have to do it for everybody, ideally, but at least for your own person that you're laning against, your enemy laner. And again, Andy kept surprising us. We weren't doing that properly. So I think that's where we could have made a difference. Maybe it would have been enough to impact the game. Maybe it wouldn't have, but we'll never know because we weren't doing it. So we got to get back on point with that. We got to keep track of our enemy laner. We got to be prepared for uh, her potential in lane by tracking her stun, making sure that as she stacks that up, we start to play respectfully of that, back off, make sure that um, we're not in range to get all in few things we could have done better there. But, uh, you know, a good lesson. Hopefully this is a sign of uh, improvement to come and we can get ourselves back stably for once <laughs> into Gold 4. We're kind of straddling that line. We're back. We're ending the day at Gold 5. 
Um, but hopefully we can get back to Gold 4 next episode and stick there once and for all. So thanks for hanging out. I hope this lesson was helpful to you. If you learned something, if you know somebody who could uh, use some additional focus themselves on tracking their enemies, uh, map rotations, feel free to send them this video. Hopefully it will be a good example of how that can really impact the game. And we'll get people thinking about that. Um, and if you are that person who saw this video and it was helpful to you, let me know in the comments. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And just thank you for watching. Thanks to everybody in Twitch for hanging out today. And uh, we'll see you guys next episode.